to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ the scripture records and the lord added to the church daily those who are being saved acts chapter 2 Verse number 47, welcome to our series of lessons on the Church of Christ. Today's lesson is being brought to you by members of the Lord's Church worldwide. As always, we want to encourage you to visit the Church of Christ in your area and visit our website, thegospelofchrist.com. If you'd like to have a copy of this series of lessons or any of our lessons, you can contact us through our website or through the information given at the end of this broadcast. If you've got a Bible study question or you'd like to study more about God's Word, we have a host of tools available through our website, again, thegospelofchrist.com, through which you can learn more about different programs and we hope indeed the Word of God as well. If you've got a Bible question, please don't hesitate to email or contact us and we'd be glad to help in any way that we can in your study of God's Holy Word. In this series of lessons, we've been thinking about the nature and the identity and the importance of the Lord's Church. Sometimes the question comes up, what church should a person attend? I remember reading recently a newspaper article in which the whole front page article was all about different couples who were making decisions as to what church they felt was best for them. And as I read the article, it was as though you were going to a department store that fit you best or you're going to a, a restaurant that your taste liked it the best. Friend, when we think about the Lord's Church, it's not as though you can just choose a restaurant or going to a menu and choosing off the menu or the buffet. That's not the idea. Way too many times in our society today, we have what I refer to as a, a Burger King philosophy when it comes to churches. Burger King's philosophy is have it your way. And we've got that same mentality when it comes to the Lord's Church. So many people are wanting it their way when in reality, it's all about pleasing God. We were created to glorify God. He's our creator. We are His creation. And it really ought to be about what does God want, not what does man want. As we think about choosing, how one chooses the church, not a church or many churches, but the church, let's realize that that right has already been decided. That decision as to the church has already been made. It is not as though there is a smorgasbord of different choices that I can choose from and any of those will be fine. Friend, the right is not mine to choose the church. Jesus chose the church for me. God planned the church for me in His divine wisdom. For example, in Matthew 16, verse 18, Jesus said, I will build my church. There's the choice already made. Jesus established it. Jesus built it. It belongs to Him. It is the church of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 through 13, the Apostle Paul pleaded with the brethren in Corinth, let there be no divisions among you. God, God doesn't want all these different religious... Or, that's not God's plan. He's not looking for all these different religious organizations. He built one body. That body is the church, Ephesians 1, 22 and 23, and Ephesians 4, verse 4. And so instead of standing back and saying, okay, I like this, I, I don't like this, this one appeals to me, let's ask, what church does God approve of? Which one did God choose? Which one does God want me to be a member of? 
as we think about the idea of choosing the church and how sometimes people approach that, let's realize first and foremost that a person doesn't just up and one day decide, hey, I think I'll join this church or I'll move my membership to this church. Friend, in the Bible, that's not what we find. In Scripture, we find scripturally God adds us to His church. Acts chapter 2, the first gospel sermon. Peter preaches, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly, God's made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Acts 2 verse 36. The Bible says those who heard that, they were cut to the heart. They cried out, Men and brethren, what shall we do? The answer was, Repent and be immersed, baptized, every one of you, for the remission of your sins. Acts 2 verse 38. And the Scripture tells us, those who gladly received that word were baptized and the Lord, listen now, they didn't choose. The Lord added to the church daily those who are being saved. How did they become a part of the church? God in heaven knew when they had obeyed the gospel, when they met His terms of pardon, they then became a member of His church. They were immersed in the body of Christ, baptized into His blood, and added to that wonderful body of all the saved. Now, as we also think about this idea, we need to address another idea. We mentioned it just a little in lessons past, but it's this. We need to realize what it is that we're talking about when we talk about the church. We're not talking about going down to the corner of Main Street and sitting in a pew. That's not the church. The church is not the building. The church is not pews or stained glass. The church is the people. I know it's not the building. For Acts chapter 7, verses 48 through 50, the Bible says, God does not dwell in temples made with hands. It's not where God dwells. But God is in His people. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 27, to Christians, to members of the Lord's church, you are the body of Christ and members individually one of another. And so what group of Christians, who are we going to be joined to when we obey the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Let's now for just a moment take a look at some of the reasoning as this newspaper article interviewed these four different couples and their preferences on why they went here or why they went there or why they joined this church, they each gave different reasons. And I want you to think about these reasons and let's think about them scripturally. The first couple said they went to the place they did because they were searching for a, a church with relaxed and liberal views. By that, Things like women preaching, uh, women leading in service, where homosexuals and gay marriage were accepted openly. They were just looking for something liberal, something that didn't criticize or condemn or didn't have any hardcore standards on anything, and anything goes type of mentality. Friend, if that's what you're looking for, you can surely find a multiplicity of those today. But is that what... God's looking for? Is that what God wants from His people and His church today? Friend, let's realize the God of this book, the God of the Bible, He has a definite standard and it is not the liberal mindset that we see today. John 12 verse 48, Jesus said, He who rejects me and does not receive my word, has that which judges him. The word that I've spoken will judge him in the last day. Friend, whether we realize it or not, or like it or not, this book is going to be the final judge. God has a definite standard even in worship. John 4 verse 24, God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Colossians 3.17 says, Whatever we do in word or deed, we're to do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. This book does not condone things like women preaching. 
1 Timothy 2, verses 11 through 12, Paul said, I do not permit a woman to preach or to be an authority over a man. That's not according to the Bible. If I'm out to please God, we don't find things like that in the Bible. God does not approve of homosexuality or, or gay marriage. The Scripture says in Romans 1, verses 26 through 28, that that is vile, unnatural and deserving of a penalty, Leviticus 18, 22 and 2013, it's an abomination that under the Old Testament deserved stoning. And so is our God, the God of this Bible, wanting us to go somewhere where it's liberal and relaxed views and anything goes? No, that's the effect of a very liberal society. We need to make sure that such is not the idea or the mindset of God. The second group that were interviewed by this newspaper, this couple said they went to a certain church because that's where their children wanted to go. Now friend, don't get me wrong. We want our children to learn about God. We want them to know God. We want them to see the importance of, of the Bible and worship. But here's the problem when it comes to things like these and a big problem in society in general. Children are telling parents what to do. They're taking the leadership role and being the parent when in reality, parents ought to be leading the way and they ought to let God's Word choose for them. You've got to train up a child in the way he'll go and when he's old, he'll not depart from that. Proverbs 22 verses 5 through 7. Parents are to bring up their children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Would, would most children rather go somewhere where there's balloons or games or, or fun or activities and all this, a big pizza party all the time? In a child's mindset, that may be what they're looking for, but is that what's best for them? Will that help them to learn about God? Learn how to live a good, moral, pure Christian life? And will that help them to ultimately get to heaven? You see, here's the problem with all that. When we let the children lead the way, and naturally, they're looking for fun and entertainment and less rules and things of that nature. And when we let them lead the way and it's all about fun, what about when what's really fun wears off a little bit? How are you going to up the ante every time? You eventually have to. That's the way fun and pleasures and entertainment work. When one fun is not so much fun anymore, you've got to up the ante and keep upping the ante until you can't up the ante anymore and then you lose them because they get tired of that form of entertainment. Friend, there has to be something more solid that it's built upon in this day and age, and of course, according to the Word of God. A third couple was then interviewed by this newspaper, and they said they chose to go to a certain church because they wanted the right music meaning that they wanted a, a big music performance. They wanted instruments, they wanted bands, they wanted great singers, singers. they wanted a seven-piece rock band and smoke and lights and all these things. Now, here's where the question really comes down to. It doesn't matter what kind of music I like, and it doesn't really matter what kind of music you like. What we've ultimately, if we're going to worship the God of the Bible and we're there to honor Him, we need to ask what kind of music does God want? That's what's really important. That's all that really matters in this scenario. Listen carefully. Worship it's not about me and you in the sense that we're there to be entertained. We're there to be praised. No, that's not what it's there for. We're there to honor and magnify God how He tells us to. And when we've done that, should we feel encouraged and uplifted that we've honored our Creator? Absolutely. But then the question comes, what kind of music is God really looking for? Remember the New Testament is that by which we will be judged. John chapter 12, verse number 48. The Old Testament has been done away with. It was for the Israelites and it is not a law that is living for us today. It was nailed to the cross. Ephesians 2, 14 and Colossians 2, verses 14 and 15. When I open to New Testament Christianity, what do I learn about music? Here's what I learn. Sing 
and make melody in your heart to the Lord. The Bible says that in Ephesians 5, verse number 19. We're to teach and admonish one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts unto the Lord. Colossians 3.16 The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 15, that we are to sing with the Spirit, to sing with the Spirit and with the understanding. Is anyone happy? Let him sing. Matthew 26, 30, Jesus and His disciples sang a hymn and went out. In the New Testament, all that we find is vocal music unto God. In the New Testament, we don't find instruments. We don't find things of that nature. We don't find rock band. If God wanted that, He surely would have told us. He could have told us. That's what His Word's for. God did tell us, sing and make melody in your heart unto the Lord. Then a fourth couple was interviewed by this newspaper and this couple was a little more unique than the rest. This fourth couple went to church because they felt like this is where the Lord had led them. Now, they were basing that off of many factors, emotion, feeling, some kind of idea of sensationalism as well. But you know, really and truly, that's where we ought to go when the Lord leads us through his book. Did, did that couple mean that? Likely not. They were basing it off again. As we said, other factors, they thought, and miscorrectly, that, uh, incorrectly, that the Holy Spirit had somehow led them there. But you know, really, that's what we need to let the Word of God do. How does a person find the church you read about in this book? By letting God and the Holy Spirit lead them through His revealed will. How does the Holy Spirit lead people to the church today? John 16, verse 13, Jesus said to His disciples, When He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He'll guide you into all truth. Well, did He come? You bet He did. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 and 17, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for proof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete. 2 Timothy 3, 16, We now have the perfect law of liberty. The Holy Spirit has revealed God's complete will, Everything I need for life and godliness, 2 Peter 1, 3, not to be added to or taken from, Revelation 22, verse 16, or verse 18 and 19. And friend, if I'm going to let the Holy Spirit lead me, I've got to let Him lead me through His Word. If I'm going to let God and Christ lead me to the church of the Bible, I've got to get out my Bible and I've got to see what is it exactly that God wants for His people? What is the nature of His church? What is the Lord's church really like? Let's think then for a few minutes about right reasons to look for, some things we ought to look for when we're looking for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. First and foremost, one wants to choose the church because it, because it is the scriptural church. That means it is the same church that existed in your Bible. Did you know that the church that Jesus established, the church that Peter and Paul and, and James and all these men we read about in the Bible, that same church they were a part of, you can be a part of. You say, well, how is that? 2,000 years later, how in the world could I be a part of the church Paul was a part of? We've got that same seed. Luke chapter 8, verse number 11, the Bible says the seed is the Word of God. The same Word preached forth from Pentecost that created, that it instituted the Lord's church for the very first time. That same gospel, same plan of salvation by which when men and women obeyed it, they were added to the church exists today. Friend, when someone preaches the gospel, when people respond with penitent hearts, they hear the Word, they believe in Jesus, they repent and change their lives, confess Him as Savior, and when they're baptized for their mission of their sins, 
God adds them to that same church that you find in the New Testament. Well, what's that church like? Here are just a few of the characteristics. That church has the scriptural time of origin. We know in Daniel chapter 2, verse number 44, Daniel prophesied that it would be during the time of those four kingdoms, Babylonians, Persians, Babylonians, Medes, Persians, and the Romans. Only four kingdoms after that prophecy. And we know that during that Roman period was the only time God set up a new kingdom. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 18 and 19, I'll build my church. And then He said to Peter, I'm going to give to you the keys of the kingdom. Did it start during that Roman era? Did it have the right place of origin? Isaiah chapter 2, verses 2 and 3, God would establish His house in Mount Zion or Jerusalem. Where did it start at? Well, I opened my Bible to Acts chapter 2. And Peter's in Jerusalem on Pentecost. And as he preaches the gospel, the Lord's church has its beginning in Jerusalem. Who founded it? Who started that religious group? Well, Jesus did. He said, I'll build my church. He promised to His disciples, there are some of you standing here today who will not taste death until you see the kingdom present with power. Paul would later say, God is translating us out of darkness into the kingdom of His dear Son. And so, who started it? Was it some man? Some restoration leader? Someone like that? Friend, that's the wrong person. Jesus is the founder of His church. And then... When we talk about the scriptural church of the Bible in one choosing the church, you need to look for biblical descriptions, biblical ownership. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 3 that in this book it was called the church of God. According to the scripture, it was designated as church of Christ, belonging to Christ. Romans 16, verse 16. It is the church of the firstborn. Hebrews 12, verses 22 through 29. It's the household, temple of God. 1 Timothy 3, verses 14 and 15. Does it have a biblical designation of ownership and authority? We then mention this. In one choosing a congregation of the Lord's church, the churches of Christ, no doubt, you want to choose a very loving and active congregation where God's truth comes first and where people love one another and are actively involved in the work and worship of Almighty God. Here's what Jesus said, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Jesus said, By this all will know you are my disciples. Is love there? Hebrews 13, 1, let brotherly love continue. Do people really love the Lord with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength? Mark chapter 12, verse 30, Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commandments. Are the fruits of that evident by people trying to study and follow the Word of God? Does that congregation have, that congregation of the Lord's people in whatever town it may be in, does it have a love for the Bible? Oh, how I love your law, David said, Psalm 119, verse 97. Do we have that same love and respect for the Word of God? Do we love one another? John 17, 20 and 21, there ought to be that unity. 1 John 4, 7, love one another as God, who is the great example of love, has shown us in His Son, Jesus Christ. And then naturally, we must ask the question, is there a love for the lost? Friend, the Lord's people can't sit around on the laurels hoping that things will just eventually get done. We've got to have the incentive to go out and take the gospel to the lost, to do as Jesus said in Luke 19.10, to seek and save that which is lost, to take the gospel to the whole world. And so what reasons do we give today in helping one to identify choosing the church, the right church of the Bible. Friend, we want to choose one that is built upon the Word of God, the only one, the one of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We want to choose in such a way that it will glorify God 
not worried about glorifying men, but glorifying God. What are we here for? What's our purpose? What's the, the meaning of life? Solomon thought about all these big questions, and he came to this conclusion. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. In deciding where one would attend, in looking to the Bible for the church of the New Testament, friend, let's have the mindset. It doesn't matter who else I make happy or unhappy. I'm here to please God. He's my judge. I'll give an account to Him. I want to choose the right church because in so doing, I've got the goal of growing spiritually at the top. 1 Peter tells us in chapter 2, verse 2, As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the Word, that you may grow thereby, grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to go and I want to attend the Lord's church because, friend, that's what Jesus wants me to do. Acts 20, verse 28. Paul, in speaking to the elders at Ephesus, said that they were to watch the flock which the Lord purchased with His own blood. Friend, if Jesus came to this earth to save the lost, and in so doing, He purchased His church, I'll assure you, that's the one Jesus wants you to go to. Friend, we ask lovingly and we ask kindly of you. Are you a member of the church you read about in this book? Are your goals and desires to please the Almighty more than anything else? If you've never become a Christian, we urge you to obey the Gospel. Hear the Word that Jesus is Savior. Believe that message. So much so that you'd be willing to repent and turn from sin. Confess Jesus before men. And then as 1 Corinthians 12, 13 says, By one Spirit we're all baptized into that one body. Friend, we urge you in your area, visit the Lord's church, get out your Bible and say, and if you find it in accord with Scripture, become a member of the Church of Christ. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about this lost souls, not your wife. And to God. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form, or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll-free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111.